by individuals that are owned by public utilities or are on uh, or owned by public utilities on leased private land. Um, they uh, have every reason, uh, if they have other sources of energy, to postpone maintenance uh, as long as possible in order to uh, preserve their cash because their cash today is worth more than their cash tomorrow, basic economics. Um, so, you know, they have to be turned into the wind. Uh, and many of them have computers that turn them into the wind. Uh, others have to manually turn. Uh, um, they really don't turn on a gimbal the way that the, uh, the old uh, farmer's windmill that you've seen uh, will turn with the wind based on a, uh, a, a rudder behind it. Um, and uh, so that's, you, you hit a certain level of inefficiency, and then the, the cost of installation is tremendous. When a single one of these gigantic monstrosities um, costs millions of dollars just to, just to uh, uh, build and install. Um, and then on top of that, because you can't have them uh, in the middle of town, um, and they're really extremely noisy, uh, and they do have uh, a tendency to uh, become a hazard to, uh, to avian populations. Um, you have to put them out in the middle of nowhere. And then that, that necessitates, once again, long line transmission of energy, which uh, means you lose, and quantum science will listen to between 12 and 75% of the energy generated um, in transmission. They line lost the end of the atmosphere, creating more electromagnetic pollution uh, that um, is more and more being uh, called the cause for um, uh, what they call cancer cells, which are um, areas where there's a, a, a spike in the incidence of various kinds of uh, skin and, and organ cancers um, based upon electromagnetic um, radiation. So um, that's the problem with big winds. Now, small winds, there are some, some really um, excellent devices out there, uh, like the sky stream that's out of this wind power that is a traditional horizontal axis windmill. And uh, it's, it's a very efficient device at 15 to 20 miles per hour. So that means it's good for about 15% of the world, because that's where you get consistent air speeds that are in excess of 15 miles per hour, uh, enough of it so that you can rely upon it uh, as a base of electricity source. Um, while that's not much of the world, I'm, I'm happy that, uh, that people where it is viable it is, that there are a lot of station installations in places that are completely inappropriate, um, where the thing rarely is generating enough electricity to make even a difference on a person's monthly bill. Um, so, what do we do to get around all of these inefficiencies and work? Well, uh, there are a couple of issues. Number one, we need to simplify the technology. Uh, number two, um, it's necessary to, uh, um, to go from being a horizontal axis to a vertical axis, so it doesn't matter which way the wind's coming. Uh, no matter which way the wind's coming, the vertical axis wind turbine which has its blades uh, on a, uh, a plane parallel to the ground, um, is always going to catch the wind no matter which direction it's coming from. And then uh, we need to lower the cost. Uh, a southwest wind power, three and a half kilowatt uh, generator uh, assembly um, without installation is about $23,500. Uh, installation uh, with the permanent foundation and permitting and all the rest uh, comes anywhere between seven and twenty thousand dollars more. Uh, now this is a significant expense for a small business person. A, 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 um, a an individual farmer, a family farm, um, or for a home or homeowner, a householder, uh, these people would have to think very carefully because it's a matter of uh, taking on an infrastructure installation expense that will actually become part of their mortgage and increase their monthly 
29th, um, and it will take uh, the better part of a decade to um, amortize the car. Uh, so that makes it a very difficult thing for a consumer to consider um, undertaking. Three sails, 